musicians in bars getting beer. It's London Stone. How you doing, guys? We're doing well, man. Great. What's going on, nice Billy? Being here. All right. Well, I'm Matt. Play guitar. I'm Ned on bass. I'm Alan on drums. I'm Jordan. I play uh, guitar and sing. So you're on the radio. 94.9. I like the first one. Uh, I think that says uh, a lot of where we want to go direction-wise. And that's called Inside Out. And um, so we thought that would be the first song played, but it actually was the, maybe the last yeah. one. The fifth song on the EP, which is, is called Found. Seven minute song, it's got like three minutes of introduction, like three minutes of outro, and only like maybe three it's minutes of actual indulgent. song. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's a lot of noise, but that seemed to perform the best and it actually got us the most kind of uh, public feedback online. How long has your band been together? I think this is our third year now. Yeah. Coming up with three years. What? How's it been? Like a year and a half with this guy? Yeah, yeah. Not even. Yeah. Just uh, just about a year with him. Yeah. Yeah. He actually just became a Canadian citizen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where are you from? Yeah. We had him. Yeah. What kind of places did you play back home? Oh, I played at weddings, bars, clubs. Same uh, sort of thing as. Yeah, festivals, year. everything. I played right. in five different bands, like so. Who wants to talk about the recording process from your first EP? And who'd you work with on that? Uh, his name's uh, Alex Gamble, and uh, for the first EP, we actually recorded at Union Sound. And then the uh, EP we're working on now was Union Sound, and I think his new place is called The High. Yeah, we actually right. even recorded uh, our first two demos with him when we first started as well. So he's been like, right. a go-to for the producer. That's true. Yeah. So yeah. tell yeah. us about. Boy. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Tell us about the writing process. I try not to think too much about it. I just kind of like to zone out and write, and then halfway through, I either click into to uh, what it is I'm talking about. Or sometimes right off the bat, I know what I want to talk about. Um, again, I don't try to bring it down to a certain process. I mean, the only kind of thing that's set in stone is uh, when I start to do like more serious work, it's always like uh, independent by myself, and then I bring it to the group that way. Usually it'll be like mid-conversation, and someone's not even paying attention, and it'll be like, hold on, play what you just did again. <laughs> yeah, and you want to jam that? And then we just kind of loop it, and that's that ends up being kind of our favorite stuff. I mean, I know Inside Out from the EP, our last EP, uh, that happened like that. It was kind of just like a the noisy bass riff, and then we just ran with that. You don't really choose, right? A pop song or a rock song or whatnot. It's kind of just the way it comes out, and just go with it because uh, it's just more fun that way. Just uh, seeing a band that'll move you. That's that's definitely something we'd want to capture. The songs as well themselves. We made them a lot shorter too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's that's true. normal that's... because people are starting to get like if you have a four or five minute song, people turn it off after two minutes. Right, right. Yeah. Fourteen minutes. Yeah. Do you know something. what I mean? Like, so I know. Yeah. Who would have <laughs> guessed? How's this affected your writing then, lyrically? Well, I mean, I, I think the interesting aspect from uh, the new three three tracks that are coming out, uh, just just confidence across the board from each band member, just being more comfortable with. Uh, just being open to different things, not kind of like I said when you when we first started, you kind of have this idea of, of okay, so we're gonna kind of stick to that kind of rock method. And I think that's a little more apparent on the uh, the first EP, which is probably why we pushed Inside Out because I think that was like the first song for us where we really kind of felt like we were breaking out of our own like mold we were starting to set. And so the, the neat thing about these next three tracks is that because they've, they're ideas that have come from the beginning like, uh, of the band, but now kind of fixed up and, and kind of approached with a, a more open mentality. So to have that, and then like Alan's saying with his drumming and whatnot, so to have like a, a different drummer to come in and play on tracks that we technically would have had a drummer playing on beforehand has mm. now sparked different Maybe things different. for us. Mm. Yeah, it's it's funny. So we've got let's so with the three tracks we've got one that's just written completely from scratch where we're at now, and then we've got another song that was like a half uh, baked idea that we've now kind of like we can now enjoy and see different possibilities in it, and then we've actually got a really old track which would have been technically written probably within the first couple of months of us being a band when we first started and now we've the version we have now is kind of in tune but it, it's had a lot stripped back mm -hmm. we've not as indulgent a, a little more like sway opposed to like a kind of like a typical rock sound yeah. so i i mean really from that and how we write it's it's just that a con continuous evolution and then just kind of wanting to just try and do more like now as especially as we we go see other bands and then we start to realize the competition we, we not so much afraid of what people would think but more so now in kind of like embracing it almost wanting people to be like oh i wouldn't expect that or it's like oh that's an odd part in a rock song or something 
Yeah, yeah if there's right. anything like we're trying to do, it's just not to, to try and get away from that, like pigeonholing ourselves into a certain genre. And and I'm playing guitar now too on a lot of tracks, so that's adding another layer to it, uh, which actually is something that our producer had mentioned. Because hmm. with the EP, we only had the one guitar, so we were able to snag in maybe like a couple overdubs here and there. With these three tracks, because I'm playing guitar as well, we have that extra layer and like a different sound. So it's yeah, it's just it's continuously building. I mean, it's it's kind of a funny thing because for all I know, this time next year, I could be saying the same thing about you know comparing the new stuff we're writing to that, saying like, oh, we've gone this direction. Like I, I don't know. Uh, again, the idea is just uh, sounds logical. <laughs> just not to, to pigeonhole ourselves. Yeah. That's yeah. All. Mm -hmm. Don't do anything typical. Yeah, exactly. You're in second year university, going back to school, and it used to be like a seven minute intro jam to another seven minutes of it the actual song so it was like a 14 minute track and oh, I that's putting it lightly like there, yeah. I remember we had a few like 40 minutes literally so, 40 minute yeah. recordings of it just recorded on like an iPod uh, <laughs> yeah. not an iPad an iPod and that's right. yeah, yeah I remember was... taking that to university and listening to it on the bus ride and thinking like this is fucking good <laughs> still a good song and I, but I knew it was, it was like for me it was something that I liked I knew it, I didn't think a chance that anybody else would like it and then ironically, ends up on the first song on the radio. How'd you guys meet? Uh, I've known this guy since, what, like, period four? Yeah, so <laughs> it's, on, it like was funny. Uh, years or something? Yeah, we, uh, I originally wanted to play guitar, he wants to play bass. He gets a guitar for Christmas, so I'm like, eh, I'll just play bass. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, it was like a, yeah, so that's how that happened. And we, he found, who found each other between you two? Uh, I think I replied to his ad. On I put up a Kijiji ad looking oh, for yeah. a singer. We've yeah. we've played in bands for for a number of years, different yeah. bands, high school bands, cover bands, whatever. Sure. Um, and I don't know. I don't even remember how we got in the situation, but I was just looking for a couple new guys to play with, including a singer. Put up an ad on Kijiji, and um, within like an hour or something, Jordan was the only reply other than one guy out in Windsor. I remember he was waiting. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was, I mean, it was just such a weird thing because it was way too easy. And it like we just we got on right away. We had like very similar tastes in music. Um, which it almost was... didn't happen actually. Th yeah, that's... yeah, because because uh, they live up in Richmond Hill, and I I live downtown Toronto. So when I like during the first email when he mentioned where he was, I was like, oh well, it's not gonna work. But I still answered like his other questions, and I was like, he's like, well, I can come downtown. So we came downtown here just for like one jam and that kind of just snowballed from there. Uh, at that time I had actually just moved to Toronto. Um, I was originally playing with a couple other guys and then I just wasn't kind of feeling that so I moved away from it. Um, I originally applied to the re ad because they just wanted a singer and yeah I just kept talking to them before we know it's like yeah we should I've got a couple of friends and then um, Ned and our old drummer was introduced to me we started a band and then just kept going from there. Just snowballed. Yeah. Like it's it. I said. Like, like everything we do with this band, we don't. Uh, as soon as we try to put, like, if it feels right, go with it. Yeah. Right? Or if there's any yeah. direction, like if we try yeah. to to kind of like force it in a certain way, it comes to a halt. But if we just go naturally with things, like especially like songwriting and stuff as well, it just kind of starts to take off before we know we've got something. Yeah. yeah. And that's when we know a song's done too. Is yeah. just feels right. And um, we actually, he was the first drummer we auditioned. Yeah. So a drummer we've been playing with for years um, decided to go our separate ways. He uh, decided to leave the band. And first drummer we tried out was Alan. And okay, then we're like, <laughs> okay, we might as well try out two drummers because we know the jam went really well. And we're like, that's the guy. In guitar, who's your, who's your idols? Who, who've influenced you? Um, it's, wow, it's been a lot of guys. Um, and it kind of goes through like pretty heavy phases. Um, I think the guy who got me into guitar was Jimmy Page. Um, just kind of ran with that for like the first eight years of guitar playing, um, really just emulating him. <laughs> um, and I, I think in general I was really into classic rock at that time. It was a lot of like, I don't know, ACDC, Jimi Hendrix was huge for me. Uh, the Doors, you know, all that good sure. stuff. Um, and then, you know, kind of late teens started to get more into like 90s alternative sound, that grunge sound. So. That's when like Soundgarden became huge for me. Um, Chris and Kim, uh, Kurt, uh, Jerry from Alice in Chains, 
Um, and then probably in the last like six years, uh, Josh Homme from Queens of Stone Age has been massive for me personally. Um, and just like a ton of other guys, like I'm all over the map really. Um, I wouldn't say it's only guitar players that influence what I'm doing and the sounds I try to make. Um, yeah, I mean, it can come from anywhere. We're huge yeah. hip hop fans. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all love it. So, does that influence your writing? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think so. It, in terms of like the beat and the like syncopatedness, that's a word. Uh, it is now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fitting that with like the rhythm, with like the beat and the lyrics, and connecting that is definitely taken from hip hop. I think there's a definite feel that you can get from hip hop that you can probably hear in our songs. Like, um, I mean, a lot of it comes from the beat for sure, but just kind of the simplicity, almost, if you want to say that, like, uh, of just driving something home. I think you can really hear that probably more than anything else that's uh, at least available online right now. In Inside Out, it's probably got the most kind of hip hop esque beat. Yeah, we're gonna come over here. What about the lyrics? Do you have? Uh, do you feel that influence in your lyrics? Not knowingly, not knowingly. Um, okay. I mean, it's probably influenced me in one way or another. Um, but again, when it comes to that kind of stuff, uh, I'm always trying to, like, out of, out of a fear of it being obvious that I'm mimicking somebody, yeah. I try to not, like, um, mimic certain styles. So uh, if it is there, which it very well could be, it's definitely not done on purpose. Yeah. Um, I mean, I do have a tendency to uh, lean towards like rhyming, which is a huge thing in hip hop, opposed to like um, more like rock songs, where like having certain phrases rhyme to each other isn't uh, like as huge. Yeah. So I mean, that's something I do find myself leaning towards, which would come from hip hop. So that could be something there. Yeah. Can you give a good, a cool guitar if like it makes you walk out a, a good beat to go with it, right? Police, the band, the police, mm -hmm. Queens of the Stone Age, as the lad said, Dave Grohl, Taylor Hawkins, all the greats, like Danny Tool, Carey. Danny Carey from yeah. Danny Carey from Tool. I was in a Tool tribute band for ten years in Ireland. Oh. So I like it all, right? Blues, jazz. I played. I got advanced lessons in jazz and stuff like that. Buddy Rich, okay. um, Billy Collier that plays jazz. Um, Steve Gadd. Um, we don't want to be a rock band, like just taking from rock, right? We want to kind of look at everything not just regurgitate what's already been done and like you know we've already talked about the hip-hop influences but that could also be taken from pop songs it'd be taken from like and literally anything and um you know what alan immediately brought to the table was he wasn't just playing you know traditional kind of rock beats or whatever else i mean he was really kind of uh down with every kind of sounds we were making things could get a little weird and he was right there you know Making it more weird. <laughs> yeah, making it more weird. Not only like playing along to it, but also bringing a level of enthusiasm to it and adding to it with, with something that we didn't have before. So, I mean, it was hard to not just recruit this guy right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, like, I played a lot of genres. Like, I played every single genre, like jazz, everything, funk, obviously rock, pop, dance, everything. So, like, I have a, bit, I have a big enough arsenal like, you know what I mean? to mix it up a bit, like if it has to be mixed up, you know what I mean? play for the song exactly yeah, uh, definitely. we're going to call you out if you're making it about <laughs> yeah, something else go. like, our writing process has always kind of been like we naturally throw a sh ton of shit together and then we just after a couple of weeks of listening to it and playing it we start taking everything back and we just make it as yeah. as minimal and as simple as possible and sometimes that's easier than others um it's kind of been our approach before we kind of jammed with our first drummer in this band, uh, we tried out a couple other guys, including this other guy that I had jammed with a couple times. And, um, you know, we brought him to the jam. I think at this time it was just me, Jordan, and him. And he is just like a very socially awkward guy, um, which is fine, whatever, but it just it wouldn't really work in, in this group. And uh, I remember we had this riff to a song that ended up being turned to stone on our EP. It's the second track. And me and Jordan really liked it. It yeah, basically we sounds it. Yeah. it basically sounds exactly like it does on the album right now with the vocals and everything. And we were like this there's something here and we jammed it with with Jeff, the drummer, uh for probably like eight minutes or something. Just it was very spontaneous and it was great. And we were all, like super excited, like, okay, can we do that again? He's like no. And then he just took out cash to pay for the room, dropped it on the floor and walked out. 
And so Jesus. temporarily called the song Fuck Jeff, because fuck him for doing that. Yeah. And uh, it was a while we, we didn't call him that. back. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> and uh, we kept the song, and yeah, now it's on the EP. Yeah. That's a breakup story. It was, yeah. it was harsh. Yeah, was I harsh. don't think we actually even like officially named it till like. We literally it was about named to it? to go on the EP. Like, we had already recorded it. Like, uh, yeah. it was still Fuck Jeff when we recorded it. It wasn't until we're kind of like, we should probably have a better name for it. <laughs> yeah. So, Turn to Stone was like a last second kind of like, okay, that works. Let's use that approach to Fuck Jeff. That's right. That's and weird. it's London Stone. That's right. And how do we find you online? Uh, you can find us at uh, LondonStone.ca. Um, you can follow us on Instagram. That's probably the best way. On Facebook, uh, we're at London Stone Band on every single platform that we're on. Find us on Spotify, Apple Music, all that good stuff. Uh, like we said, we're getting that new EP coming out, so yeah. keep an eye out for that. This is our first recorded music with Alan on drums, mm -hmm. which is very mm -hmm. exciting. You can hear his what he's brought to the table. His beats. Uh, yeah, three he's... very different sounding songs, I think it's fair to yeah. say. The next EP we've got is actually a really good kind of like capsule of like where we were and here hands. we are now yeah. we'll oh, that's that's right. Right. Yeah, it is. it's a go. little yeah. London Stone sample, pa sample pack yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so what songs getting played the most? probably found got the most love and what song do you there. want people to request more? of the EP Inside Out is probably uh, the song we kind of like our first to show people yeah. okay so we got it thanks guys thanks for being on Musicians in Bars Getting Beer thanks, thanks for having us really.